I have two questions. First of all, two of you referred to a club as the KRT or XYZ. What, what club are you talking about? KRB was the Knights of the Red Branch. And it was, it was uh, on Mission Street between 7th and 8th. And it was right across from the, the old... It was right across from the old Greyhound uh, station. At one time, St. Patrick's Church, which is located on Mission, I think between 4th and 5th, and one issue about, one statement about the church was when it was built, they even were a little political. Because if you ever go by St. Patrick's Church on Mission, if you look at the the front of it, it has, inside the church, it has uh, um, uh, all of the saints from each county in Ireland. But on the outside, it was political because it has the four provincial coat of arms right on the front of the church. Well, the KRB, I'm not sure what year it was built, but when we used to practice, we would go in the parking lot behind it, and Dan would give us the key to run around to open it up. And one of us would go around, and then we'd all go down the steep steps. And I went down there one night, and just as I put my foot down, some fellow that was sleeping there stood up. That part of San Francisco um, became very run down in the early 50s, maybe, or and there were a lot of homeless people uh, at that time. Can I jump in, Dan? I, just, yeah. I was going to just add to that. So the KRB was a social club, really, is uh, that um, the Irish built. Uh, had to be in the 20s because my grandparents um, met in the 20s. My dad was born in 27. Um, and it was, as I remember, there were three floors. And we would practice in the basement. And then there were two floors with dancing. And, of course, there was a bar on each floor. And the Irish, that's where the Irish used to go and congregate and meet, you know, as they came to San Francisco from either different parts of the country or from Ireland directly. And so, like I said, my grandparents, my dad's parents met there and my dad and mom met there in the, in the 50s. So what was the name again, the Knights of the Red? Knights of the Red Branch, and the Knights of the Red Branch is, um, is the Ulster, right? It's the Ulster, right? It, it was also, it, it, it's, a re it's a literary reference to the Ulster cycle of tales. It's an a re reference to an ancient Ulster-based literary cycle. But it, uh, Caribbean was also um, a branch of um, Clan the Gale. So it was a, you know, it had a political function. Um, it was a fundraising organization. And it burned, it burned down 15, 10, 15 years ago or so? Yeah. One more question. Why orange neckties? Because you had the color of the Irish flag. You had the white, the green, the white, and then the orange tie. We used to wear hats when I was a kid. And a lot of kids, again, they weren't ready for kids. So they had to stuff them with, uh, you know, you wouldn't be able to see my eyes. They were. So we had to stuff them down. And, You'll uh, see, my Brian brought, you know, the uh, uniform and the hat. There's a hat in the back that we, we all used to wear for a while when we wore the ties. And the and the real old uniforms were blue. And I just remember they used to have a a locker, and I remember seeing them, and and a lot of uniforms were mimicked after the local police uniforms and the Union soldiers' uniforms. And the only difference between the policeman's uniform and the Pierce Conley uniform was 
the harp on the insignia on the hat. And the beer stains. <laughs> how, how is the band financially supported? Uh, basically through donations from the community. We do very little f actual fundraising, but we do get um, donations occasionally and a lot of the generosity of the members. Hi, this is really fun. Um, we were in Butte, Montana last fall <clears throat> because my wife has roots there. Her uh, grandfather was the editor of the newspaper around the turn of the century. And uh, they have an amazing archive there and reference for a historical reference. And uh, they have a couple of sayings chiseled into the granite on the front. I thought I would read them to you. One is, now don't forget, Lizzie, when you get to the New World, <clears throat> don't stop in America. You go straight to Butte, Montana. <laughs> and then uh, Teddy Roosevelt was there. He visited, and he says, Butte was mercurial, the wicked, wealthy, hospitable, full-blooded little city welcomed me with wild enthusiasm of the most disorderly kind. <laughs> we had a wonderful time. So the band is actually traveling to Butte on Thursday to march in their St. Patrick's Day parade. We've talked about it for years, and actually Dan and Eugene McPeak had hoped to do it in their lifetimes. They never made it, but we figured for the 100th anniversary we'd try to get back there. The drum came from there from 1917, so we figured we'd bring it back there. So we'll be marching there this Friday. Um, we're hoping to get some pictures and video taken and put something together. We do have a Facebook page, so um, Pierce Conley Band, so check it out um, in a few weeks' time, and hopefully you'll see some footage from the parade up there. I think you answered my question. I was going to ask you if the band had ever been back to Butte, Montana for St. Patrick's Day Parade. Not yet, but this will be the year. As I told you, I was there at the parade last year. I'm from Butte, and it was uh, 12 degrees and four inches of snow, so <laughs> be prepared. We're hoping for something a little better this year. The, Thanks for telling me that. The, the, worst, the worst parade I remember was marching in the rain and we didn't have the common sense like the Pipers to drive and get out of the cars at McGovern's and walk the final two blocks. We marched the whole distance. And unfortunately, I was wearing colored underwear, <laughs> which everybody was able to tell me what color it was <laughs> afterwards. So. Any other questions? Paolo. Who started the band? If you want a name, I can't tell you. <clears throat> what Mary's grandfather says is when he, he joined the band, it was being run by somebody by the name of um, McNulty, I think. I've forgotten his first name. Maybe it was Joe. Um, but we don't. I don't actually know the answer to that question, Paul. It's a good question. And all we know is there are about 30 or 40 of the original members who came to San Francisco, and I don't have an exact date for you either. I think it's about 1923, but I have to do more research on this side to find out when they actually landed. I know they were in. I know they were in Butte in 1922. And that's, that's my last trace of them in Butte um, that I've seen. But good question, Paolo. And another question is, uh, how old is the drum? 100 years this year. Older than everybody in this room. <laughs> Several people have carried the drum at various times. Uh, I think they used to look for the heaviest people to carry it at one time. I carried it once or twice before they used to have, if you look at the, the drummer today, he'll have a special harness. Before that, they used to have what they called the horse collar. And it went around your neck, and you carried it with your neck. And 
Margaret's dad, Gene, hit, I think it was Jones and Market, and if you look, there's a, a wind tunnel there. And I was watching Gene, and he did a 360. The wind hit the drum, and it just <laughs> spun him. And it's a wonder he had any neck left, because um, that's how we used to carry it. Any, anyone else for a question? Hello, everybody. Thanks for a great presentation. In the 1980s, I went on a number of times on the Norad tour that was organized out of San Francisco, actually. And um, I wondered if anybody uh, ever went and played music in Ireland, going back to Ireland to play any of the music that you were playing here. My brother and I both used to play the Ulan pipes. And the man who taught me was one of the O'Neill brothers that left the Pierce Conley to join the, to form the San Francisco Pipe Band. He taught my brother and me, my brother and I, the Ulan Pipes. When my brother died, my son took over. So there, uh, I was going to tell a little story, a Norage story. So last year, um, at the um, Irish Center, the, the the dinner before the parade, there was a presentation about the uh, Pierce Connolly, Mr. Uh, uh, Connolly, Pierce, and the seven who had um, organized the Easter Uprising. And there was a man from Norade that spoke, if you guys remember. And I, um, I went up to him and introduced myself. And uh, he said, I remember your dad, little Eddie McGovern, we used to plot revolution in your restaurant. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> my dad was, you know, I guess, funding the revolution in Ireland. So. Thank you so much. When and where do you practice? It depends if it's just music or if it's marching. So if it's music, we usually practice in individual homes. And if it's marching, any open blacktop we can find. <laughs> this might be a good time to mention that we're looking for recruits. Yes. And if you're interested in joining Pearson Connolly and maybe becoming um, a new member, or you have kids who are interested, like Paolo has his hand up here, as a potential choice. <laughs> you know, please see one of us in the back or give us your contact information and um, we'd be happy to talk to you. Yes, no experience necessary. Everyone welcome. Okay. All righty. Well, um, thank you all for, for great questions. And what we're going to do right now before anybody leaves is we're going to clear the stage and the band is going to perform so you get you get a musical piece after the spoken piece <laughs>